Today I have a collab with Razor Edge Strength, Ray mm -hmm. Guzman, one of my old wrestling coaches, and I wanted to bring him on. The title of today's video is Crawling Out of Hell. And the reason I wanted to spin it like that is because Ray Guzman, at a point in his life, you can say he was living a hellish experience. He very was, hellish. Very hellish. You want to touch upon it a little bit? Yeah, man. Um, so first off, uh, uh, Gisela, I want to thank you for having me, bud. Um, I really like what you're doing as far as putting up the YouTube content and um, just giving uh, advice on how to better your mental state and how that correlates with not only just mental health, but physical health, emotional health. And you're doing a very good thing, bud, and I'm, I'm very proud of you. I've been watching some of your videos, and uh, you're doing a good thing, man. Um, in, a, in a time and age where, like, the theme is to kind of fuck off. Like, you notice what gets a lot of traffic on social media, um, content creators. It's a lot of fucking off. It's a lot of, hey, let's drive this car as fast as we can. Let's fucking chug a beer as fast as we can. Let's party as hard as we can. Um, it's very refreshing to see someone your age do what you're doing, man. And I just want to start off by saying I'm, I'm very proud of you, bud. Oh, and um, so what you were saying a second ago is living a hellish lifestyle, man. Um, I'm, I'm very open about talking about this um, because I've always felt like the reason we go through these things is to pass on not only how to get out of it, but the signs that lead to it. I'm very transparent about my experiences. I have no problem talking about it. Some people are ashamed of mistakes they made. Um, I'm an advocate in making mistakes. Granted, no one gets hurt, and you try to minimize hurting yourself as much as possible. But mistakes are necessary. It's like when I'm coaching you, if, when I used to coach you in wrestling, I didn't like seeing you make, you know, make mistakes, but I think as a coach, that's how we address, uh, address problems, address issues, and at the end of the day, at the end of the practice, season, match, whatever, like you're gonna be better as a whole because of those mistakes because I have something as a coach to look at address make adjustments and you leave that setting a better wrestler person than you were when you stepped in so I'm very open about talking about uh, a, a lot of my fuck-ups could we cuss yes okay cool so I'm very open about that um uh, so maybe about about three years ago um I really spiraled uh, uh downward did a heavy heavy downward spiral and um, the main source was my drinking. I was a, a, a pretty heavy drinker. Now, growing up, I wasn't really uh, a, a drinker. I was mainly a pothead, mm -hmm. you know? So I remember uh, cutting out pot when I was maybe 26, 27 years old. And I'm the type of person that, like, um, I have a very addictive personality. I'm a very extreme person. Me too. Uh, like, right. I think, I think a lot of people are. Um, and if you don't have something constructively occupying your time, uh, if you don't recognize that, you're going to go into, you know, get into something that is um, not so beneficial. And so, and actually was the year I wasn't coaching. So remember there was a year where I coached you at your high school. And uh, I There's was coaching junior year, my junior year. your junior year of high school. Right. So I coached your junior year of high school. Um, at the end of that season, uh, I got transferred for work. And I, I have this thing where... I don't like coaching anywhere I'm not on campus. So the school that I got transferred to, there was no wrestling program there. So um, I was, and as it was, I was kind of getting burnt out. I had coached for about seven, eight years. We'll say close to 10 years I had been coaching. Um, so I had been coaching. I was working out of a training facility in Bell Gardens. I was working the full-time job. I had a girlfriend. Like As it is, that is a ton of like, a lot of juggling. And uh, I wasn't really the best at managing my time uh, at that time and place. Mm -hmm. So when I wasn't coaching, uh, I was spending a lot of time with, with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, and this is not a bad thing, but it just was something that I didn't recognize and didn't pick up on. Um, so you mix up being burnt out, being spread too thin, and just having finally having free time on my hands. And, you know, it started off with, hey, let's, you know, we became foodies. Mm. We became foodies. So, you know, we go out to get a bite to eat pretty much every other day whenever I had time off. And I'm the type of person where, I, at, least I, at least I was, when I, liked, when, I, when I used to eat, I used to like to have a, a nice cold beer with me. Mm. You know what I mean? That, for me, that was just a, 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 refreshing. A, a refreshing, a little, um, just to, uh, let, let the edge off a little bit. Can I say something? Yeah, but go ahead. Um, in the book I'm reading, The Way of the Superior Man, it talks about how beer is like a form of feminine energy mm -hmm. that men love. It cools you off, it calms you down, and you're saying you were burnt out, 
spread thin and you're going out with your girlfriend and that beer, mm-hmm. that feminine energy, it cools you off, calms you cool down. Me off. It, it took the edge off. You know what I mean? From, and especially me. Like, I'm a way different person now than I was growing up. I think growing up, I, I, w- I was a very, um, like, standoffish, just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A lone wolf? Not, not necessarily a lone wolf, but, like, I was too tense. Like, I was, I, I was always worked up. I, I wasn't necessarily angry, but um, it was brought to my attention. And looking back on it, in hindsight, like, you know, looking back on it, um, I was very, like, very tense. Like, I, I was very square, very, like... Play, do things by the book. Did. Right. Um, and uh, so as I got older, I, I started trying to make adjustments towards that. And I wasn't coaching anymore. So I was like, you know what? I could, I could be chill now. Like, I don't have to set as much of an example to the kids I'm coaching. Like, if, if I was doing this while I was coaching you guys, like, it would, like, it would mentally mess you up. It would not only mentally mess me up, but it would just set a bad example. Like, imagine if I was showing up to practice every day and I was just hungover. Like, it's just not a good look for you guys because I am the person that's trying to not only coach like uh, like like um, like teach you how to wrestle but be the I, ultimate leader be an ultimate leader and I, my thing is for coaching i like coaching people i'm a very big advocate and when i go into coach wrestling i'm not just coaching wrestling wrestling the sport of wrestling itself is just the vehicle where i that i use to develop young men and women like as much as i want to see you do well in wrestling you know i want to see you hit a clean double leg or win a match i want to see you become an even better successful person um, so I'm not sure if you remember, you know, it, you were young and I think this goes, you know, when we're, we're at that age, it goes in one year and out the other, but I'm very big on coaching values. I'm very big on coaching, um, stuff that you can't, isn't tangible that you don't see on the scoreboard. Um, like, you know, how to be somewhere on time, how to give your best effort, how to handle pressure. Um, you know, just stuff in that realm along those lines. And, um, so if, if, if I was fucking off the way I was like it just you'd be like this fucking guy like he doesn't even you know live by his own rules like the rules he's telling us why should I listen exactly something I'm noticing is at that time when you got into the hellish experience you lost responsibility Mm -hmm. that's like Mm -hmm. the key theme Mm -hmm. since you lost the responsibility of being the leader of us in the wrestling room no responsibility it's like all right now I can now I can enjoy myself happy hour right for a foodie experience exactly so it started off like being foodies we were just you know very innocent just fun going out getting a bite to eat but i would have a, a drink or two every so often you know while i was having that meal and then it turned into and this is where i tell people all the time this is where some of the biggest fuck up fuck ups happen um football season mm. so football like this is the first year i really cut like pro sports out of my life because like how often do you go to a, a sports gathering where you're watching a game a match anything and there's fucking salary sticks on the table and you don't eat and you don't right no, you go and people have an ice chest full of beer. You're at a bar. You know what I mean? Um, so, um, yeah, so football season was rolling around. And I would find myself being there for Monday night football. I would find myself being there for Thursday night football. I would find myself being there for Sunday football. Sun- Sunday morning. Sunday after, yeah, my mornings, afternoons. And, like, as it is already, that's three days out of the week that you're drinking. Mm. And then it turned into, oh, my ex, you know, my girlfriend at the time, she really enjoyed wine. They used to have wine Tuesdays. Another experience. Another experience. So Mondays, Monday Night Football. Tuesdays, Wine Tuesdays. Uh, Thursdays, Thursday Night Football, have another drink. Sunday, and then Saturday rolls around, Friday and Saturday roll around. You think we're going to stay home and play fucking tic-tac-toe? No. We're going to go out. Go we're going to go out. Exactly. So... Before I knew it, I was drinking pretty much, you know, five, six days out of the week. And, and, and that's, like, the premise of, like, how it all just started. The feedback loop of hell, the spiral. The spiral, exactly. It was just, all we are doing is, get, you know, going out, having a bite to eat. And then, so not only was I drinking a lot, but I was putting on a lot of weight. Um, and what was your highest weight you got up to? 250, I want to say. About 250. Yeah, that was probably the highest. And um, so that was, I want to say... Mm, Mid twenty nineteen, uh, uh, going into twenty twenty. So, so this is that's where I'm getting at. So, like these that 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 pattern of like shitty behavior and habits started um, at the end of two thousand nineteen. Twenty twenty starts, and early twenty twenty, that's when the shutdown happens. So the shutdown happens, and now I'm home all day, and we're still getting a free paycheck from the school. Like I was very fortunate enough that the school, because of our union. Uh, in our contract, 
Like, we still got paid out throughout the year for just staying at home. And you think I was, you know, like, over here, like, working saying out. my prayers, eating my advice. I should have been working out, looking back on it. Um, but that, that wasn't the reality of the situation. That's the home just, gym setup you had, it didn't start. It was non-existent. Thing. No, no. So, so the, I'll get to how the home gym started. So in March, the shutdown happened, I want to say March, like 13th or 14th of 2020. Yeah. It was around there. Uh, two weeks later, March 29th, 2020, uh, I got pulled over uh, for a DUI. Oh, so I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Oh, so that's how bad it got. Like, that's how, how, how bad. And that's what I consider like, like, part of like rock bottom um so i got the dui and um at the time like i said the, the shutdown had just started so there was no school and at the time i wasn't sure if we were still going to get paid out by the school so at the end of the day like we ended up getting paid out um but i was working for the gym the gym got shut down and the gym ultimately ended up going bankrupt so there goes that you know how much dui tickets are more or less no idea. at the end of the day about 10 g's 10 grand about 10 G's you got to pay so you have wow. the, you have the initial fine you have the car being impounded um, your insurance goes up because you have a point on your record on your license um, the, the classes and just like everything all in all and more or less like uh, breaks down to about like ten thousand dollars per, per you know per DUI <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lot so me knowing that it was one of those things where like um, shit like I gotta I can't just I gotta pay a ticket so you would think the DUI would be um, like a snap out. the snap out, and, and unfortunately it wasn't. It took a little bit more than that. Um, so I, I I got the DUI, and you have you have what I call the day after effect, where like you just feel like complete and utter shit. Like you're the worst person on the planet. Like you you let down everyone who supported you, and it's um it, it really brings you. It, it does what it's supposed to in a sense. Um, but unfortunately I did not learn the lesson then. Mm. Uh, I remember about a week or two later, I went out with some friends and I got even more plastered and I drove home. Wow. And like, I didn't get stopped that time, but I'll tell you this right now. And I'm not proud of this. Like that was, I was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times more fucked up than I was when I got stopped. The DUI. The DUI. Right. Um, and so, like, when that happened, I remember getting home, barely being able to walk, and I ran into my ex, and she was just freaking out, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, do you, do you not, like, did this not register? Did you not learn? Blah, blah, blah. It, it, she was still your girlfriend at the time or no? Right, she was still my, my girlfriend at the time. Okay. Um, so, when that had happened, like, it took me going through that, and, like, I was still getting boozing at home, I was still you know, kind of fucking off. It wasn't really until I, I got to my, uh, my court date. So I'll get to that in a second. So in the middle of the pandemic, you know, I, I have to raise up about 10 G's, you know what I mean? Just getting paid for my school district job wasn't going to be enough to, to, uh, pay, pay off them. everything that I had to pay off. Um, I ultimately decided, Hey, like, I think training is in demand right now. People need to work out. So I, even though I wasn't in the best shape that, uh, you know, at the time. I'm known for being in, or I should have been in. Um, I had to make some money, so I started advertising mobile home training. So when I, I remember that on right. Instagram, just at parks, you working out with people with just one little Ex bag. Exactly. I had a well. I would. I had like kettlebells. I had dumbbells. I had sandbags, slam balls, uh, bands. So I would load up my trunk, and I would drive to people's houses. I would meet them at the park, and I would put them through a workout. And at the time, it was like black market, like in a black market operation. And it was in such demand. Um, like I was racking in just crazy money. It was like selling drugs. That's like I tell people all the time. It was like selling drugs. Um, so after about, and keep in mind, this is all on a suspended license. Like when you get stopped for a DUI, your license is suspended until you get it cleared at the court date. Um, so um, I must have been doing that from about I want to say May June ish that's when it started um and at, at, after about three four months I realized like man I'm making some some good cash like and, and I'm driving on, on a suspended license which probably isn't the best idea let me um how, how crazy would it be to have a setup here where Ooh. I get a, a bench a squat rack you know what I mean and as opposed to me risking driving on the road to people's houses because I do have a suspended license, why don't I just bring them here? 
So that's how like Razor's Edge started. Like, I, I tell people all the time, like Razor's Edge was not supposed to be a thing. Like I never, it never occurred to me that like, oh, maybe you should have a home gym set up. Like it just, it, it never hit me. Even though that probably would have been the best move at the beginning. Um, like from year one. Right. It took me fucking up to like, oh, I, I need to make money. So that's how it started. And um, so I get to my court date and I am ready to face the music. Uh, I didn't go in with a lawyer. Uh, I was going to go in, plead guilty, you know, pay what I had to pay and, 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 and let that be that. So I remember getting to my court date and I spoke with my public defender and, and I make a joke all the time. Like I, I saw my public defender. And this dude was like a six foot tall white dude in a nice suit, clean cut. And I remember thinking to myself, like, okay, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> so, uh, dude just sits me down and just basically says, hey, um, I know the uh, district attorney. Uh, based on your record, this looks like an out of character move. This doesn't look like something you would do. Because uh, that was pretty much the only time I had been arrested and, and, and whatever, pulled over, whatever. Um, other than that, it's, it's a spotless record. Mm. Um, so he goes, we're going to throw you a bone. Like, we're going to slap you on the wrist, and we're going to drop it. Do you promise to never let this happen again? And at the time, it was like... Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, can you say that again, but slower? Like, just let to, me process um, this. Right. Me, he says, yes. Just, for, you know, we're going to forget this happened. Just get your head out of your ass, and don't let this happen again. Snap up. So, <clears throat> did that snap you up or not yet? It it it, it kind of did. It kind of did. So that was that was like one of the biggest like the, the second big wake up call. First wake up call was actually getting going through the, getting the DUI. Second process. Uh, second you know, um, like head out of my ass moment was was that I was like, dude, this is a chance. Like this is this is like the if you believe in a higher power, this is the higher power saying, look, dude, this is your time. We're 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 we're, we're throwing you bones. And you're like come on, like some make some like we we gotta get something going. So, uh, uh, I, I actually did kind of run with that. So, um, I, I saved up more or less about 10 G's that I needed to pay everything off. Uh, at the end of the day, I think I only had to pay 1500 bucks. If that, like, you know, the impound, the insurance, and we'll say the, um, the actual fine, the fine itself was like 300 bucks. So I had like eight, nine G's that I, I, I had at my disposal. So that's when I really started going in on the home gym. Like, so, okay, like, now it's not a rinky-dink, just a squat rack. Like, let's make it look like a gym. Let's lay in the turf. Let's get mats. Let's make it look like a gym instead of a backyard with weights. So, um... A real gym, not just, like, a little home gym. Exactly. Exactly. So, um... And that's when I was like, okay, like, I, I gotta start getting myself in shape now. And, uh... Um... You were still out of shape at that time? I was still pretty out of shape. So, I, I started doubling down on my diet. I think I went from, like, 250 to maybe, like... 200, 195 ish. So I, I got down in weight, started making a lot of. What does doubling down on your diet look like? Um, like the Ray okay, Ray. so let's let's more or less cut the boozing out. I cut the drinking for 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 a while. The number one thing. I cut the drinking, and once you cut the drinking at my age, like the weight just fucking melts off. Um, I tell that to a lot of people my age, because people my age that are barely getting into working out, they're working out, but they're working out consistently. They're like kind of eating well. But you can't out train the shitty diet. But then, but then, like, they go out drinking, like, you know, the casual college right. lifestyle, and I'm like, just quit drinking mm -hmm. and, like, watch you just have a six-pack. It, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get that message across to, especially, um, uh, like, people your age, kids your age. Uh, there's a saying that I love, and it, like, I, I tell this to a lot of the athletes I work with. It's, it's youth is wasted on the young. Like, it's, it's, it's when I was your age, uh, it was fucking, I wasn't, like, I, tell you, I wasn't really a drinker. I was more of a pothead. So... Um, it was easy for me to get in shape. I could just double down for a couple of weeks and I could see myself starting to look, you know, shredded and like see definition on my body. You know, the numbers would go up when I was lifting. Um, you don't have that luxury and it, you really start feeling your body slow down when you hit like 27, 28, like your later 20s. That's when, like when I went through it, I was like, oh, this is real. Like I'm, I don't feel the way I, I'm not recovering the way I used to. Like I, it, you, it's, it's very noticeable. Every time you talk about, when we talk about working out right now, we were talking about, oh, like I got a, a strain on my biceps. biceps and, oh, dude. Or, like my recovery. I, I don't, I can't relate to You that. can't relate to it. I just right wake now. up and it's like, let's go train again. Like, exactly. Completely normal. Mm -hmm. And I miss those days. Like I remember going through that and like running into people my age, you know, I'm 30 now. 
And they're like, ah, just, you know, <laughs> just wait. taking their time warming up and like, oh, what the hell are you doing, pussy? Like, let's just start working out. Like, ah, dude, trust me. Like, I, I need to do this. And like, it never registered with me until I started going through that. Like, now, now I have to, I have to do five, ten minutes of mobility. You know what I mean? I'll do five some minute cardio warm up. Car- something, get the blood flow, get Rotation. the blood through the joints. Exactly, man. So, um, so, uh, so I got down to about 195 and and that was sort of cutting out the drinking and just fixing the food. Fixing a bit. the food, right? You know right. what I mean. I still treated myself here and there, um, but uh, like the weight started melting off when I made those uh, made those adjustments. So, um, so the drinking was one really bad part. The second part, and I'm willing to admit this now, is I was a really shitty boyfriend. I was a scumbag. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, I never like physically hurt my you know my ex, but I I, I was the I thought it was cool to to go around and, 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 and fuck other chicks when I was in a relationship. Like that was something that like I'm looking back on it now and it's so stupid because I had a really good situation. And it's something that really taught me how to grow as a as a man now that I'm looking at it in retrospect. In that experience. Going through that experience, man. Like it, one of those things that like really hit me was like like you really turned your back and you severed that connection of trust with someone who loved you to death. And that's something looking back now, like, dude, like, what the hell was I thinking? Let's touch upon that. Because yeah. for a lot of the young people right now, me, all the guy friends mm-hmm. I have, and just the popu- the, gener- the population in general, right. touching upon, like, the guys, like, kids my age that we want to become men. We're yeah. trying to. We're mm-hmm. learning. And then the people we're learning from is, like, the Andrew Tates or the everyone else out there and some people that promote monogamy or getting hey, as much girls as you want. If you, if you can pull that off... Who am I to say it's right or wrong? I'm just saying in my experience. In your experience. In my experience, like, it, it just, I don't know, man. Uh, it, it, it just, it's not as fulfilling as you like to think it is. And that's the big word, fulfilling. Fulfilling. Fulfillment. You know what I mean? Like, there are times where, like, I'll hook up with a chick, and I'll just feel, like, empty right after. And you're coming from, this is coming from someone, like, like, throughout my 20s, that's all I did was chase pussy like i'm looking back on it now like how much time and money the energy and energy was just diverted into just chasing ass and it was fun don't get me wrong but like how long can you really do that before it's like okay like the formula now what the formula right there's a book i read hard times Crazy strong and i don't know if you've heard of that i have heard of it i've never read it i've read it. it's like a bible it's like this thick mm-hmm. and i went through it and the guy said how he had both phases when he was younger he chased pussy. He got he got up to like seven girlfriends, and like that was his life, mm-hmm. and how unfulfilling it was. How it like destroyed his soul, mm-hmm. and then he promotes or he guided. He gave the advice of either be in a committed, loving relationship mm-hmm. or be single and celibate. Right. Like, and then if you want, because there's other guys that really promote go do the other thing and get as much pussy as you want. Because for some guys, the city yeah, boy lifestyle. That's the big thing now. Like city boy, you know, that's the, a, the, the city boy lifestyle, the fuck boy lifestyle, the player lifestyle. Right. And they promote that it might be helpful for some men that kind of don't believe they can do it. Mm-hmm. So it's like that 50-50 That right. even hey. guys like me, we don't. I don't know which route is it to take. And uh, like, and you learn that through experiencing and fucking up. Like if 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 you go through like like if you go through that experience and you feel like shit after, you've learned the lesson. You know what I mean? Um, but it really took me having to. Uh, like lose that connection. lose that connection and with a good like don't get me wrong she had her own issues too like this was not something that you know like I'm, I'm willing to hold myself accountable on my end but it ended up just turning into like just a textbook toxic, textbook toxic relationship textbook you know what i mean where like i was always stressed out being around her and i think the stress led me to kind of fucking off and don't get me wrong i wasn't a shithead the entire time um there were points and times where i really tried to double down and be as good of a partner as, 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 as I could possibly be. Um, but, you know, like, we're all human, and we all endure stress. We all endure, just we all just make stupid decisions. And at the time, I thought it was cool. Like, I would brag to my buddies, like, oh, hey, like, look at this chick that I'm taking down right now. Like, you know what I mean? Kind of like, um, the like, ego. like a sports fisherman. You know what I mean? Like, oh, hey, look at this fish that I caught. You know what I mean? You catch the fish, you take a picture of it, show it to your buddies, and you throw that fish back in the water. Um... I can see that um, <clears throat> dynamic. Yeah, in people my age, like and my, it's everywhere. It's it, not just it's not just people. You're just people my age still doing that. Um, and uh, like, but going through that and learning what I did, 
for me, it's just like, dude, you had a good situation. Like, you had a, 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 an ex. A someone with loyalty. Someone who was, who was loyal to me. She had a good, you know, she was an architect. She had a really good occupation, a, a really good career. Not even an occupation, a really good career. Um, sweetheart, does she have her own issues? Yes. Of course. Of course but so do I. So, um, I think um, as I got older, I started learning how to hold myself uh, a lot more accountable. And noticing that, like, oh, shit, like, these things that you thought were cool really aren't, like, because at the end of the day, and and this is something, too, that, like, really hit me, really, it hit me really hard on, like, when we were having that, like, final end of the relationship, like, Like, discussion, like, the goodbye discussion, and I remember one of the things I would always tell her was, you need friends. She had a couple close friends that she would, you know, hang out with and stuff, but it was just, we'll say it was two friends, um... And I would always tell her, like, hey, like, you got to kind of, like, not network, so to say, but you got to get yourself out there and meet gr- crowds of people and whatnot. And I would always, like, she would see me, like, I would have groups of friends that I would associate with and go out with and hang out with. Um, so this is something, like, she fucking nuked me on the way out. Like, she, as she's walking out the door, she's like, hey, dude, like, you say you have a lot of friends, but who's really your friend? And at the moment, I'm like, she's just trying to get under my skin. She's just trying to fuck with me. Like, she's emotional. She's just trying to hit me with whatever she can. Just to so, leave the last imprint. Exactly. So I kind of shrugged it off. But then a week goes by. And, you know, I'm going through the breakup, you know, emotional waves, you know, where I'm, I'm kind of not feeling myself. And no one's checked on me. And the, two weeks go by. No one's checked on me. A month's gone by. No one's checked on me. And I'm not the type of person that, like, puts my stuff out there like I don't know like we're, we're dudes and it's a, it's a known thing that like men don't like talking about their feelings you know how they're feeling why they're feeling it what caused it we're, we're, we're very um reserved at least most of us are um but still like you start noticing like hey man like who's really who's let's go let, let me let me remind a little bit there were two people that checked on me my buddy Hector and my fighter um Jesse Jesse what you, I trained I, I trained Jesse so he's in the loop because like, I do work with him and stuff um, and I had a client that was very like, you know, she, she would check on me every so often. Hey, hold you up. Okay. You good. So let me rephrase that. There was a, a few the majority, of, the majority of your friends, like the weekend ones, the Mondays, the Thursdays, the Sundays, those all just fizzled out. Nothing like that. Nothing, nothing. So it was really like, Oh shit. Like, and then a year goes by and some people still haven't asked me how I'm doing. Have they asked you to like go out? Oh Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm um, invited to you know, kickbacks and hangouts, and don't get me wrong. Like, it's no one's job to check on me. Like, it's no one's job to constantly check on me and see how I'm doing. But, but like a, if a we're brother going, or a family member. If we're going based off of what a friend is, like, th- that wasn't there. Um, and it's not a good or a bad thing. It's just the reality of life. Like, and people got their own stuff going on. So I'm not going to, like, take that to heart. And, like, have them be the villain in my fucking... Like, villainize them. Villain, right. No, I'm not going to do that. It's we just... We all have our 40-hour weeks. We all have... Responsibilities. Workout. We all have the kid crying at us. Exactly. Bills to pay, jobs to go to, you know what I mean? And, um, so, I didn't vilify them, but it was just one of those, like, reality checks where, like, man, she was, she was just, right. just kind of right. You know what I mean? Like, who really... Who, who do I really have? Like, I said I had all these friends and stuff, and at the end of the day... We'll say four people checked on me. And I'm not saying... And, and thank you to those people who did check up on me. Um, it, it really did mean a lot. And it did get me out of a, a, a little a little slump. Um, <clears throat> a little slump. It was a really big slump. Man. <laughs> so um, when I broke up with... Uh, when, when I broke up, when we, when we broke up, um, that's when I really started doubling down. And like I went through a crazy... Like, like the way revenge breakup? It wasn't... You know what? I, I don't want to call it revenge. Like that's... You didn't get like that. I don't want to get motivation. Or no, that. but there was a void in my life, and I just filled that void with physical activity. Not even just physical activity, activity in general, just productive activity. We'll call it productive activity. Um, you know, I started going on more hikes. I love hiking. I, you know, I started going on more hikes. The I runs. Running. I started working out a little bit more, following the program. I'm not going out to drink with my aunt. Well, the drinking was already kind of minimizing. But I wasn't going out, you know, when you're with the, when, when you're with a significant other, a lot of times chicks really aren't into 
fitness and it's not her she's not in that industry in that her line niche. of work she's like fuck you I don't want to eat chicken and rice again <laughs> so we find ourselves getting sushi getting ramen getting Spicy burritos Mexican whatever it is you go out and eat something I've been experiencing me with my own partner at mm-hmm. the moment mm-hmm. that I'm like what what do we do like oh let's go out to eat and, go, and I've been right. trying to create systems in my own life of how can I keep the body I have keep the like the discipline and lifestyle that That's I hard. love and how can I balance it? And like systems I've been doing is like, I buy it, if wherever we go, I find the most healthiest thing I can think of right. on the menu. And that choice, like it takes discipline. Right. Instead of getting the classic burger, and then I even cut the meal in half. 80-20. 80% work, 20% leisure. Like that's the format that I'm starting to kind of mess with now. And I'm, it's, 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 it's keeping me, it's, it's, it's moderation in moderation. So I have a saying, everything needs to be done in moderation, including moderation. Like, um, if you can take care of yourself 80% of the time and have that 20% of, okay, let me just decompress a little bit and just let have some present. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you are someone who does have, um, like, uh, you want to achieve certain goals and you get that through discipline. It's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, but... You learn through trial and error. And if it comes through just like, if it comes to the point where you literally have to like write stuff down, I have a whiteboard there sometimes. And a lot of times it literally comes to me like, write this down. Okay, you can have your ice cream on Friday. You know what I mean? And like it's circled with the happy face. You know what I mean? And I have everything else that I got to do. I got to walk the dogs. I got to clean the house. I got to work out. I got to program for clients. I got to do X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, but like it, it's it's hard for a lot of us to double down and and and, and simplify it to that extent. You but know keep what I mean? Simple. Keep it simple. You, that's really what it comes down to. You just have to keep it as simple as you can. It's you know how you you heard the phone call I got right before we started recording. A buddy of mine, he's a photographer. Overthinking too much. It's, well, his job. That's how he makes an income. He mm-hmm. he he likes things a certain way. But I was at a wrestling practice and I need. I, hey, you can get a video of me just do some shadow wrestling, and he recorded it, and I thought it was good. I thought it was amazing. And, but he called me, he was like, hey, dude, how was that video? Did you, like, was that okay for you? Like, bro, like, the yes. The perfectionism. Yeah, but th- th- that, that's, that's a good thing to have. Like, you want to be able to have that. Like, Up to it, in a moderate extent. sense. Right, exactly. It's good to have that. Like, that's why, like, this guy's, like, done photo shoots for guys like, like Post Malone. He's worked with, like, fucking influencers. Like, he's What's really good at what he does. His name's uh, Anthony Billionaire on Instagram. Anthony Billionaire on Instagram. Anthony Casada, that's his name. I've known this guy since he was a freaking a, a kid. Um... But, like, that's just his shtick. Like, he, that's why he has the resources and he's done what he's done because he has that level of, perf- you know, perfectionism, if that's even a word. Uh, he's a perfectionist. Um, but for something, like, as small, I was asking, hey, just get a video. Like, dude, dude just don't ever think it. Just, you're just recording me, just going through the motions, just shadow wrestling. Um, but, yeah, just, I think the, 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 the big thing is just try to simplify it and make it as, there's so many actual difficult shit in life Fucking your right mortgage, your right fucking your your taxes. You know what I mean? Like fucking going Pay to your, your job and life. being a good employee. You know what I mean? Uh, managing a business, being a good parent. Like there's real difficult shit out there. It doesn't make any sense to me to add to that. Overthink of when do I eat my ice cream? Right, right. You just but just simplify it. That's the, the, the that's like the at the end of the day, like make it as reasonable and as simple as as it can and, and what works for you um but like going back to like you know after the breakup man um that's when i really doubled down that's when i really doubled down and that's when life got really really lonely and not for the bad not 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 for not like in a solitude way in a sol- well to an extent there was some solitude um but it's kind of like if you know you were a trainer if you had a like an overweight client you know, if your overweight client who's been overweight their entire life is a week into their training program, and the goal is for them to lose as much weight as as they can in the possible, f- right? Oh, coach, when do I get a cheat meal? It's like motherfucker, your whole life's been a cheat meal. Like, well, worry about losing the weight first, then we'll talk about cheat meals. Like, like because David Goggins says it, right? So my thing was like, hey, I've enjoyed like. X amount of years of partying and boozing and having a good time. Let me get away from that and not even entertain the thought 
of those activities of uh, uh. so like it was very extreme it went from me being you know having a drink here and there throughout the week maybe even getting fucked up to like okay I, I'm, I'm, I'm tracking my macros, I'm training, you know, five times a week, six times a week, okay, and the times that would I would be tempted to go out, I have to train those times, so I would find myself training Friday nights and Saturday mornings, like, I did that on purpose, so when you go out, it like, it's in between, yeah, I can't go out, I gotta train, oh. sorry, yeah, and then if you train on Saturday mornings, like, have you're you ever not trained, gonna, you ever train hungover, or sleep deprived, it's shit. horrible, so I'm like, okay, I, I don't like that feeling. Exactly. So let me take away any chance I can, I can get of distracting me from, from, from feeling that way. You basically set up a system to for your future self. So once future you that's more tired, 40 hour week is tired, I want to go for a drink. Mm-hmm. Like the more bitch you, I have to work out on Saturday morning. I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't it's do just it. there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what I, what I had to do. I had to be that extreme. Um, and, uh, so I, I went that route, man. And it, it, I'm telling you, it got really, really, um, lonely, not in a bad way. Like it, it just, I think lonely is the a different word. It just, it got very, um, in a solitude way. You, you, it got, you got, it got quiet. It, it got, got quiet. It got quiet and you were able to just be by you. Right. And it was the best thing to happen for me and Probably ever because I got the best. Have you ever been life. that alone and quiet for such a period of um, time? For that, no, no, that that always no, girlfriends, have. always um, like a like a little. Well, girlfriend. I was always or like always work, always like yeah. something distracting you. Yeah, um, growing up, I wasn't the most social person. Like uh, I was actually a pretty um, antisocial growing up. I was very awkward. I was very, I didn't really start like hitting my groove and. Uh, as far as being like um, socially like pleasant, like I was just very to myself, very reserved when I was younger. I had friends and acquaintances, but I was kind of just uh, you know just doing my own thing when I was a kid. So doing there the was, requirements. There were there were there were aspects elements of me you know very similar to what I endured recently, but it was something that I was very familiar with and comfortable with. I think a lot of times now what a lot of um, our peers struggle with is being alone with themselves and in my opinion like that's where a lot of the growth happens like you really figure out who you really figure out and you find out who you are um in in those times um like i like psychedelics i'm gonna go into that like i like psychedelics um and in my opinion with a reasonable dose I don't believe in bad trips. Now, I think what a lot of times what we kind of classify as a bad trip is we start getting in our own head and our head starts kind of... You lose control of your head. You lose control of your head. And like a lot of times, at least in my experience, when I mess with psychedelics, um, I kind of like get scolded by my head. Like, hey, dude, you need to stop fucking out. You need to stop fucking like... You know, stop being a slob. Clean up your room. You gotta hug grandma more. You gotta, you gotta say I love you more. Um, you can't be late to this anymore. Like you, you need to do this better. And it's just like, oh, dude, I just wanted to see funny colors and the <laughs> fucking plants dance. Like I don't want to hear all this. And it kind of corners you and it kind of scolds you to an extent. Um, I think our generation, especially mine, or just even people in your age, no one's scolding us anymore. No one's scolding and you. Ev- everyone's just like, oh, you. Got drunk last night. Good job. Like good job that for that. That sucks, bro. That's a that's terrible like, cycle, man. Like, I'm, I'll, I'll let you finish. But go on. Um, to keep going. That's ba- that, that's basically my comment. It's just that's, there's no more scolding. And that's, when you were in the psychedelic trip, and people say, "Oh, I had a bad trip. I don't want to do that." It's because they don't want to feel that discomfort of the when they're quiet. And to go back to the solitude, I had a point on that. I love that solitude feeling mm-hmm. so much that I force it in an everyday habit. Mm-hmm. How do I do that? While I used to eat, you know how we have to eat like four to six meals, Mm -hmm. like bodybuilding or just strength training in general. I was like, I'm spending a lot of time sitting down eating and I would love to watch YouTube Mm -hmm. and like entertain myself while eating. That'd be like my fun time. And I realized I was like, I could find some quiet time in this time. Mm -hmm. Threw my phone away and now I have a habit of every time I'm eating, because it's such a repeatable thing. Every day we're eating, Mm -hmm. I just stay quiet. And then I don't watch no YouTube. I don't put the radio. I don't put TV. And that's when I get that. No external distractions. It's just... 
You in your head. moment. You in your head. And that's what I like doing when um I I, I make it a point now. At least once a week, um, I'll head up to the uh, national forest and I'll just disappear for a couple hours. Maybe even a night. Like I'll just have always have my tent and my sleeping bag with me just in case. Um, but I'll go up there and I don't get service up there and it's just me and the dogs. And I remember last week, yeah, last week there was a you know some it was snowy and it was just a very beautiful just 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 scenery. You know what I mean? So one of my like favorite forms of therapy is I'll make it make a little campfire and I'll just hang out just in the moment. moment. So I remember last week just catching myself, I have this like, at one of the spots that I'm going to, I have this like, this tree trunk, like this log, it's a pretty big log, and I'll lay it next to the campfire, and I remember just like laying back, and just looking at the stars, as gay as that sounds. I was just, and you know what, I was just counting stars, I was like, no, let me just count, let's see how many I can count right now, you know what I mean? I forget how many it was exactly that I counted, but like, as, as, as little, as minimal as that sounds, that's just being in the moment. Like, you ever just sit back and count stars? It's fucking beautiful. Like, it's just, it's relaxing. 99%, 99% of us are thinking about all the data I got later, or I have to go to work. Yeah, or I'm I'm just, I have school tomorrow, I have homework, or mm-hmm. I didn't get that text back. Or mm-hmm. and, So I'm, I'm listening to the fire crackle, the wind blow, and I'm just counting stars. Or what I like doing, another exercise that I like doing as far as like an exercise to just be in the moment, I'll just look at a tree. I'm gonna look at a tree, I'm gonna look at that tree, and I'm gonna see, okay, how is this tree different than that tree? What features does this tree have? How many branches does it have that stick out? Oh shoot, that one has a really, that one doesn't. And like, you really begin to see the tree for what it is, as opposed to it just being just a background, name. just background. And I think when you learn how to do that, you do that enough times and you learn how to do it, you begin to do that with people. You begin to do that with everyday situations. Like you don't just, see Gisello, just background noise and a background person, you begin to understand and see what he is and what separates him from every other person. And it's a beautiful exercise that um, that I picked up years ago. And uh, it's, it's it's done me well. It's, it's taught me how to be in the moment. How to and be present. How to be present. And that's one of the things that like... And not all of us can like meditate the well, way I preach it. Like some, right. some people feel like, oh, I can't do that. It's mm-hmm. just another exercise. Right. And it's just one of, it's, it's, it's one of those things too now where... I've always, and it's, it's no one's fault. Like, we're all products of our environment. We, we all, for the most part, live in Southern California, Los Angeles. And I think, like, I've always said about Agilinos, um, we're always in a rush to go nowhere. We are, like, everyone. I was in a rush to get here. I'm in a rush to leave, to go to the, the spa or the mall. Whatever. We're always going everywhere. But, like, when does the rush end? It ends. Like, it's gonna be there at some point. Like, granted, you have stuff that you want to check off your list and stuff that you want to do, but at the end of the day, it's most likely gonna be there tomorrow. And 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 maybe that's a, a class like a form of being unorganized. But how many people are just in traffic in a rush to get home and do nothing and fuck off and be on their phone and watch a show that they've probably seen fucking a hundred times or a movie they've seen a hundred times or whatever it is. But like, I've always felt that like Angelinos especially. Um, or in a rush to go nowhere. In a rush to go nowhere. I've been experiencing that recently. It's just built up, like, it's just built, like, built up ang- anxiousness. And it's not a good or a bad thing, it's just the reality of the situation. Um, and so when you take a second to sit back and just be present in the moment, it's it's refreshing. Like, it, it, like you almost don't know what to do at first. You're almost like, dude, like... I need to be doing something. Yes, and then it isn't until, you know... A, hour or however long it takes afterwards until you realize like shit like this is it that fucking monkey's off my back like i don't feel the anxiousness that i i'm used to feeling you know what i mean i don't have the need to check my phone and oh shoot i got the message from oh shoot i got the this oh shoot the email <clears throat> um but you know it's just one of those things where i think a lot of us are scared to take that initial step to do that because we kind of fear that feeling of just being alone and it's it's not good to always be alone but you have to be able to do it and i started experiencing that recently um within the last i'm gonna say two and a half months are you regrowing your social group now like your tribe yeah so that's what i was getting at so i was i did what i had to do be to, alone to be alone and I, I grew from it and business was booming i got in the best shape of my life I really figured out who I was, what I, you know, what my true values are from that time alone. Exactly. But 
Like, have you ever seen the movie um, Into the Wild? I've heard about it. I okay, know. so it's, it's a beautiful movie. It's about this gentleman. Um, like he just wants to leave everyone. He just, like, he grew up in a family of wealth. Um, he, uh, um, like, his, I think his dad worked for, like, NASA. His mom was, like, a psychologist, counselor, or whatever. Comes from wealth, basically. And after he graduates college, he's like, this fucking life is not for me. And he just basically says, fuck this. I'm trashing my car, and I'm just going on this cross-country road trip. The end game is he calls it his great Alaskan adventure. He wants to just live in the wild in Alaska. So the whole movie is about him going from town to town, people to people that he's running into, crossing paths with. And he's constantly talking about his great Alaskan adventure. So he's trying to save up money in order to pull that off. Gets there. And I forget how long exactly he was up there. But he's journaling his whole adventure experience. And one of the things that he says is like this thing we call life. It's, it's at its fullest. And it's uh, most effective when you're able to share these experiences. You know what I mean? I read about that. Because that, that story always comes up in books I'm reading. Right. So, like, this thing that we call love, it's it's in all these experiences, like, it's, it's it's most fulfilling when you're able to share it. So, I had began, like, feeling elements of that where I'm like, dude, okay. Like, you did what you want. You did what you had to do. You did the inner work. Like, time now, to come out. Now it's time to, like, start, like, rebuilding some of these you know, like you said, social groups, these uh, these relationships. And uh, I'm at that point now, man, where I'm starting, you know, like, it's so funny you say that because, like, we, we have this talk because I had this week off of work, you know. I went out a couple times last weekend. I went out with some friends. I'm starting to make it a point now where I'm starting to reach out and, and, and have these interactions. I'm ready to come back. Yeah, really. And that, that's really what's going on. It's so funny we're having this conversation. It just popped up because uh, I was going to get to this right now. Like, uh, even about two and a half months ago, I, I really went through this, like, I call them funks. Like I, I've experienced like waves of depression and anxiety, and I really hit this funk maybe about I want to say beginning of October, where like I'm not sure if you've ever dealt with like depression. I think everyone has. Um, I certainly have, but like it comes like in little short little waves. Like you'll feel this like feeling of like fuck man, like I just don't feel myself today. And then after a day or two, you fucking shake it off and you're back to being reset. Yeah. You reset. Man, I was having this almost every day. And it didn't go away for about a month went by. I was still feeling it. Two months went by and I was still feeling it. I just wasn't feeling myself. Um, and it really started bugging me too where I started considering reaching out and utilizing resources like therapy and, you know, seeing what my options were. Um, and I noticed it when I started getting the urge to just sit where we're at right now and just crack open a bottle and just fucking booze. And I'm like, okay. That's a you sign. recognize like you've seen this before. We, That's like a coping coming back. It's like I need a cope, and this is the one, like the main one. Exactly. That's how you know it's getting. So bad. the the good thing was though, I recognized that. Like okay, we're not going to do that. So I started telling myself, let's go, let's get back to basics. Let's start. You know what I mean? Like so, one of the things I've been doing to get back to basics is I've been wrestling. Like that was something that I've always done growing up, and something I kind of got away for for a couple of years. Um, but I started making time to just go get wrestle. back into a room. And just wrestle, and I think no goal in mind, no nothing, no tournament, no nothing, state champ. It's just nothing. Just go, it. just go wrestle, roll around. And, and 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 I think one of the things that makes all of us like it's a natural human response, reaction, and feeling. Um, like we feel a lot better when we're contributing. And I have ten years, fifteen years of wrestling experience and knowledge. Let me pass this on to someone. And it doesn't got to, I don't got to be a full-time coach. I don't, I'm just going to go find a kid, help this kid out for a day. And not in a manipulative way, but I felt better. Like, oh, dude, like, this this feels good now. Like, this is, I'm telling you, I, I just went back to basics. Went back to what I knew and what made me feel good all those years. Um, all those 10 years. Right. And it really did help. Um, two, I started just reaching out to people who I consider close and just engaging in conversation. Like, I'm saying, I would kind of, like, isolate myself and I would go MIA. It's like, um, we're in that rush. I don't have time to know what you're doing. Like, exactly. Do you, like, I have to go do something. Mm-hmm. So, once I kind of got out of that, and, and this is a slow point, uh, like, you know, we're, we're, we're trainers. Um, this is a slow point in the year where, you know, your schedule isn't as booked right now because the holidays are coming up. People right. don't have traveling, people family, are traveling. parties. So, 
It's actually, yeah, exactly. So it's one of those things where my schedule started lightening up and um, like I had time myself now. So, oh, I can do these things. I can just reset. And I think like a lot of the, um, the like where the, the, the anxiety and the depression stemmed from was me just being burnt out. Like I was just on such just a fucking like, mission. Just a pattern for you and all of us. Right. It was just, I, I started feeling burnout. And that's like what kind of caused the first spiral that I had. And I started seeing it come back again where I'm like, oh, oh shoot, too. like, okay, kick your feet up, Ray. There's nothing wrong with just, with, with like a you can leisure kick, time. You can kick your feet up, but no beer has to be there. A coffee, right. water. Something. And yeah. Just say, hey, dude, let's not go back to those patterns that got you to that rock bottom, to, you know, let's not, let's stay away from that. Um, so I started just getting back to base, like I said, getting back to basics helping out with, you know, I was helping out at Sure a little bit. I helped out at Montebello a little bit. Um, I've been constant with my training program. Like, I'm, I'm sticking with that. Like, that's something that I'm very proud of myself for being able to stick with and stay consistent with that. Um, but that was, like, it, it was very stupid elementary, getting simple. <clears throat> Just do something that, and, and hanging out with, with, with loved ones, checking up on them. Hey, how are you doing today? You know, are you okay? Are you good? And, you know, how's everything in the noggin? Is everything good with you? Just, like, for some reason, that just, like... It, it, it was, like, the last piece of the puzzle. Right. Like, so, you, you worked on everything else, all the solitude, all you mm-hmm. being by yourself. All right, now, other people. Yes. Society. And, and and the thing is, like, as a trainer, I'm I'm constantly, like, we've, like, I've had discussions with trainers. The hardest part about training isn't actually... Okay, let me just start over. The hardest part about being a good trainer isn't the X's and O's. The hardest part about being a good trainer is like the wear and tear of the relationships you establish with clients. Like when you have a client and they become comfortable with you, you all of a sudden become an unlicensed therapist. Like you're hearing all their problems, what's making them feel like caca. What do you think got me into therapy? Training, for sure. Yeah, like because that's really what we are. You know, you hear about so and so's sick parents. And oh, my husband's being like an asshole. Or right. I don't oh, want to work out today. My what? boss is being a piece of shit today. And oh, why is he a piece of shit? And he's being. And I'm working crazy hours. And oh man, my kids are sick. And like you become an unlicensed therapist at that point. And like if you don't check that, like that does start to wear you down because you know you ever hear that saying like you're the product of the group of people you associate with. Of course. You know what I mean? If you hang out with five millionaires, you're going to be the sixth. If you hang out with five people who constantly have the poor me's, guess what? You're going to be the sixth. Now, whether that is forced or whether it's, 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 it's by choice, like you are a product of whatever you're associating with. Um, so, you know what I mean? And, and this is nothing to anybody that I'm associating, but like everyone does have their, their fair share of problems. And, you know, whether I'm capable of helping or not, it does tend to wear you down. Not in a good or bad way. It's just, like I said, it, like I've said, it's just the reality of the situation. It's the reality of life for exactly. therapists, trainers, anyone. Mm-hmm. So, anyone who wants to help. Right. So I think, like, just like that in comparison, and that, um, plus the burnout, plus just being all year just in the zone, it just kind of wore me up. Right. So now, I know this, this week was Thanksgiving week. Um, I you took the off. entire week off. Yeah, I took the week off of school. I didn't take any clients this week. Um, I'm just chilling. Leisure. And I have a really bad problem. Like, I, I, I get so extreme into work mode. Like, I'm a workaholic. Like, I'm a workaholic. The addiction. The addiction of it. When I don't have it, I feel like something's wrong. Like I, I need to be working, just... you need to be productive. I've experienced that. And it's like, you know you're, you know you're doing good when being productive is like kind of a problem. Yeah, so it, it's it's something good. It's a good problem. Mm-hmm. It's a good problem, right? Because how many pieces of shit do you know who don't do anything all day? Who just get high all day? They post on Instagram just taking fucking dab rips all day or fucking shotgunning a beer at nine a.m. Like that's a thing too. And like, I'd rather have the other problem. Exactly, been, there, been at both. You, we've both been at both. Right. And you know the feeling of I'd rather be tired, but I was productive all day than be tired, but I was a piece of shit all mm-hmm. day. You got uh, yeah. You, you it, it's a good thing you 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 have the capability of working the way you do um but it can't be unchecked it does have to be moderated even that it has to be moderated um but yeah man that's pretty much like what how you know like my my alcoholism and like 
my rock bottom started and like to the point where we're at now, man. And like, yeah. what's coming? Because I remember last time we talked, you were talking about any future comings, a uh, gym coming up. Yeah, um, you know, I, I've been future having discussions with my with my accountant, and we're about three years away from having a facility. Three Taking years. my time with it. Right. No rush. No rush, man. What's the rush? You know what I mean? Like it's it's all. If if I keep doing what I'm doing, and I keep doing it to the best of my abilities, like I have no lack of faith in what the end result's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think at the end of the day, man, I do want to have my own facility. And one of my dreams has been to have a wrestling club. I want to have a Razor's Edge wrestling club. And that's like, if if it wasn't like, if coaching at the high school public the public high school level. Like to be like to be honest, they, they really don't pay you much. Like you're doing a lot of that because you, you generally care for the sport and you want to help. Sure, like an inner fulfillment. Right, but the reality is like it doesn't pay your bills. It doesn't even come close to that. Um, so as of right now, like I can't afford to coach. But if bills were non-existent, dude, I'd be I, I would I, I would never have left. I would never have left. It was it's something that I I, I love doing. I enjoy doing. Um, but I just at the moment I kind of had to step away and kind of set some things in motion and lay a foundation, something that's going to help me provide a living for myself, a comfortable living for myself, um, while being able to do that. So down the line, I think a wrestling club is something that I've always, uh, uh, wanted to do. So, you know, having a facility, strength conditioning facility, a uh, wrestling club area. Like a public gym or no? <clears throat> um, like a public gym. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. But uh, I, I definitely do want to have a facility where we have a, an operate a youth wrestling club. That's just that's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, it's beautiful. Right? Yeah, dude. It's just it's it's not much, but you know you're saying I mean it's not much, but it's honest work. Like that's really how I feel about that, man. It's just it's it's not a lot. Um, but the to get there, it's it's, it's not easy at all, man. Um, you know, I've had some like what's a little bit of what you got to do to get there. The three years. How is the, the next three years just, looking like? Like, still be what I consider a decent trainer. Like, I, I can't go piece of shit mode on my clients. Like, I still have to live. I, have a, I create a standard. What's your standard? My standard? For, like, trainers. For trainers? Dude, you have to... So, like, like the way I coach. I can't just coach you the way I coach Caesar. Like, you guys have two different body types. You guys are two different men. You guys are two, two different, different mindsets. Two different mindsets. Two different emotional sets. So I have to learn how to communicate with you and get a message across to you and get the same message across to Caesar, but I so can't use the same resonate. blueprint right and speak his, you know, speak his language, get something across to him and design something for him. It's like, hey, if I show you a move and that move doesn't work, that move works amazing for you because your body structure, you're long and lanky. Like I might have to find something that works for him. And it, like the end of the day, the goal is to win the match, but Win it in the most like enjoyable way. Right. That what's there. what's constructed and geared towards making you succeed? It's not just a one size shoe, fits one size one fits program all. for everyone. Right. And um, be reliable. Like you have to and not only like set something up and put the athlete, the client in the best possible position to succeed, but you also have to be reliable. You have to be someone who is not necessarily respected. Like, you have to kind of live the lifestyle yourself. Like, you can't just, like, fuck off and be fat. Like, I can't be fat boy Ray again and still expect to retain. Preach, like, go go eat your fruits and veggies. <clears throat> exactly. And just be a good person. Like, I think a lot of times trainers are wrapped up in the X's and O's of training. And as uh, as important as that is, we like... become dicks. Right. You know what I mean? And you, you, you have to be a good person. And you have to, like, whatever product you're trying to sell, like... It has to be genuine. There has to be a sense of um, like being a genuine person behind it, like which is why I had to bring in a money man, because like an accountant, because like I'm a little too genuine. Mm-hmm. I'm a little too like caring, and I have been there. I have a, I have a business to operate, but at the same time, how many free sessions have you done in, like your whole life? Dude, you have to do that. Like uh, to an extent, you have to. Like if someone's paying year round, it's like hey, dude, like you paid. Three months, like, dude, the next week's on me. Don't even fucking worry about it. You know what I mean? Um, and that's good to do every so often, but I was doing that a little too much, where it's like, hey, man, like, I, I understand times are tough. Let me just, the session's on me today. Just get here. 
Whatever. Uh, no, we're good. Oh, it went off? Uh, like, 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 okay. So I think we can speak forward. to the camera a bit. Yeah, we'll speak to the camera a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's a big part of it, man, is you just got to be a good, genuine person. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm still new in this game. I'm only about four years, five years in, if that. Into like the training stuff? Into the training stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm still fairly new to it. You know, I'm getting myself out to... Um, Getting myself um, to seminars, you know, I was at the um, uh, um, Luke Worthington and uh, Tony Genocor uh, seminar recently, and uh, it was amazing. I'm actually trying to go to a, a Perform Better seminar in January. Um, there's another one um, in Cleveland, the West Side. Um, uh, they have a seminar coming up. I think it's in March. That I'm kind of I'm, I'm thinking about going to as well. Um, but you know, just a lot of self education. Exactly. I think it's something we can end off on how much the self-education is what kind of gets you to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Definitely, man. And you have to self-educate. That's a big part of it, man. You know, Not just college, no uni, high school. The easiest way, man, is just to read. Like, it's one of the easiest ways. It's a beautiful way. I remember when I was in the middle of my... um. Shoot, I, you know what? I'm going to go into this right now, if you have time, man. Um, Let's do it. When, we were, uh, when I was in the middle of my slump, uh, I was on this hike. Now my buddy and I, my buddy Hector and I, we go hiking a lot. So after my DUI, uh, my buddy Hector, he's actually the one that convinced me to do the mobile training because mm -hmm. he had just started it. And his thing was like, remember, he, he kind of scolded me on this hike. And he was telling me like, hey, dude, you got to get your head out of your ass. Like, he's like, I just started this thing, this mobile training. It's in demand. And he goes, you need to pay a DUI ticket. He goes, I know you can get two clients. He goes, let's say you charge each of those clients 50 bucks per session and they go twice a week. Okay. That's 200 bucks a week right there. Okay. You multiply that times four, you have 800 bucks for the month. Guess what? You're an eighth of the way or uh, you're, you're a tenth of the way to paying your fucking, or I'm sorry, a fifth of the way of paying your DUI ticket. He goes, uh, he goes, you can get two clients. He goes, but you could like, basically at the end, tell me to get my head out of my ass. Like you're so, the, you're better than what you're displaying. You're a fat ass right now. You're a drunk, and that's not you. Like that is not the way that I know. Your man's calling you out. Yes, and that's what I think a lot of us need, man. Like a lot of us, like you said earlier, like we all have that. No one calling us out. We have no one. Uh, what, what was the word? Keeping us accountable. Right. No one holding you accountable, and uh, like it's it's easy to have the friend come over, hey dude, I'm outside with a 12 pack, let's fucking go rage, you know, and that's easy to do, and no one wants to be that accountable friend of like, hey dude, Gisello, if you're gaining weight, and you you're were getting fat, bro, air, you're, you're, you're just, you're, criticizing you're, each other, right, now you're just like, in, in, a, in a healthy manner, right, but if I noticed that you were just getting fucked up all day, you were fucking off, and you were just like, abandoning your responsibilities, you were being a shitty boyfriend, like, my thing was like, dude, like, that's not you, dude, like, I know you're in a slump right now, like, what can we do to like get you back to where you were to the Giselle that I know? Because that's not you. Um, no one wants to do that. We all want to coddle each other. We all want to like be uh, comfortable with each other, right? And that's just not how things work. In my opinion, that's not how we grow. That's not how you grow, man. And it's easy to fuck off and suppress those feelings and those habits and go the opposite route of just forgetting about it. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. Numb it, numb it, numb it, numb it. And I wrote a blog about that. I've noticed that the more I get deeper into this space, the more I work on myself, the more accountable I'm being towards my guy friends, mm -hmm. like my male guys in my tribe or mm -hmm. my friends, my group. And I'm becoming, you can say I sound like a dick or I'm being very harsh, but then I just realized like, if I'm the top one out of my friend group, then I need these guys to level up mm -hmm. so they can be hard on me. Mm -hmm. They can call me out. Cause I, 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 I'm at a point where not that many people call me out. Right. And I need to be called out mm -hmm. cause that's how we all grow. Right. And uh, I tell my friends all the time, dude, if I am the voice of reason in your life, that's a fucking problem. Like, <laughs> like, I should not be that voice of reason. But because I went through what I went through, this is how I can Niche. contribute. Right. This is where I can help. This is where I can. I've been there. Right. And uh, yeah, man, it's just uh, we, I was talking with a friend about that recently. Where He has a client who's like 400 pounds, fucks off. He has a friend that shows up with a 12 pack every day and let's drink. You know what I mean? And my, my buddy's trying to get his client to lose weight, but this dude isn't losing shit because he's just constantly in party mode and, oh, we had the UFC fight, let's fucking come and gotta drink it up. And we were just laughing about that. Like, fuck, dude, if we're the voice of reason in these people's lives, like, fuck, dude, they got some shit. Like, <laughs> like there's some shit going on. Um, that's yeah, man. Um, 
Is there anything else you wanted to touch on, bud? That was mostly it, the whole mostly. story. I was a beautiful story. I'm very, oh. I'm very thankful I oh, got dude. to listen to it. Oh, I got dude. to for my own Thank betterment you. of my my journey, but then also for everyone that's hearing that it was able to just get one piece of knowledge, right? right? One piece of knowledge that they could just apply. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I want to talk to the camera real quick, guys. Um, you know, I, I like I said a little while ago, uh, in, in this in this episode, um, don't be afraid to talk. If you ever have, you know, any kind of issues, like, like we all do, it's completely normal. Um, you know, these waves of depression, we kind of feel like we're in our own little bubble. We're on our own, you know, like we're the only ones going through it. You know what I mean? Like, let me tell you this. You're not the first to go through it. You're not going to be the last. Um, find help. Find someone to talk to. You know, do something creative to get your mind off of whatever it is that's holding you down um, and, and, and get you on a path of like, creative productive um expression and that's one of the things that i think helped me out the most and i'm not saying it's the answer for everyone if you do feel like you need help by all means call get, a professional call a professional um but this is just what's worked for me and like i said do not be afraid to reach out to someone that you love or who loves you back and um explain or express how you're feeling you know what i mean like i said we all have these moments of machismo where like it's it's, it's a weak feeling and it's not. We have to hold it back. Mm -hmm. I was in the same experience when I went through my own, my 19-year-old version of what Ray's going. Because I bet I have another one coming, hopefully. Because it just means more growth. Mm -hmm. I I went the same route. Deleted everyone's number. Stopped texting back. Stopped hanging out with people that loved me at the time. Mm -hmm. Because I felt, oh, that's what I have to do right now. I'm hurting. Like, I need to hold back. Mm -hmm. But it just prolongs the pain. It definitely does, buddy. Hey, Gisela, I really appreciate you having me on, pal. I love you, dude. Anytime you want to do something like this, bud, sign me up for it, man. I had, I had a blast. I have, too. Thank you, guys. See you in the next one. Take it easy, guys. That was beautiful, man.